Um, the, all of the discussion has been about, I don't want to get into colour semantics, but about red litter bins, and we know about the big uh, green litter bins as well, where most of the food and trespass and stuff like that goes. So does that half the problem, or does it double the problem? You know, the green bins are big bins as well, uh, harder to get into. So what impact does that have? Yeah, so um, yeah, at the moment the coffees are mainly targeting the, the red litter bin. Um, I'm actually curious what would happen when we actually change the lids to red. So we've got to show the colour, but it's only taken care. Um, we do know that yeah, if all the foods in the Fogo bin, the green litter bin, then that's going to transfer the issue. So while we're fitting locks on the red bins at the moment, we do know we're going to have to do that to the Fogo bin later. So this trial is more around actually identifying a, an option, a solution. Um, and then the rollout will get um, targeting the main bins with the food in it. Ideally, for all the foods in one type of bin, i.e., the Fogo bin, that halves our problem as, as far as putting the locks on. And they are twice the size. They are a little bit hard to get into, but we have seen uh, coffees get into the larger bins as well. So. Look, I have a concern about the bins in the more public areas. Like down on the beach from the other day, they were completely and utterly overflowing everywhere. They are manifestly inadequate for the number of tourists in town, and clearly they're just not coping. And I think that's a very serious issue. So, so that comments more related to, to bins generally than the copper tube impact, is that right, Beverly? Well, well, both, because, because one goes to another. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can address that if you like. So we are working quite closely with the, the Coast Authority. Um, we do have the same little bin contractor servicing those bins, so we can meet with them at least monthly, discussing various issues. So they're aware of what we're doing as far as trying to do with the copper issue. And, um, they are distributing information in the caravan parks about uh, not feeding the cockatoos for visits to their caravan parks, but yeah, means in general along the across the whole of the coast is an issue this time of year. Um, we do our best they can, but you know we're not um, stopping bins from overflowing. That's a different issue to the cockatoos. But why are they so small? They're just the same size as residential bins. You should have massive bins there for recycling. Massive, three times the size. Okay, so sorry, it's, it's it's a bit hard for Neil to, to answer several several people talking at once. Um, so in terms of the size of the bin, Neil. So those at home, um, yeah, just querying about the, the size of the bin. So the ones that we have in lawn, those solid compacting bins, actually hold five times a normal household bin. Um, the ones at the Coast Authority, they don't have those compacting bins at the moment. They're exploring that option later, but. Um, yeah, well, it's on our beach front. Yeah. The lid is going straight under the beach. So, so I think your point's been well made. Um, the compacted bins, am I right in thinking that they do what they say, they compact the, the volume so that you can fit more in even though they look smaller. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So, and also they're fully enclosed, so the coffees can't get into those bins, so those solid compacted bins. So that, that was part of the reason why we tried them down here, was uh, the coffees can't get into them and they cross the shy with, with Added foods on the other normal bins as well, so it can be deterred from getting into them. So it sounds like there's still an issue with litter on the on the um, for sure, and I'm, I know that Jane and Leanne have been taking notes, and and the session's been recorded, so no doubt you'll put that into your your further strategies. You need to remember that pretty much the for sure on the other side of the network road, the Russian road, that's all the coast authorities um, land they manage. So, so will you pass? We work with them, but we can't tell them to. Will you pass that feedback onto them? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm interested in Clive's comments before because I think they're terribly pertinent. Um, the people that uh, leave their bins out when they leave on Saturday, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, they've got absolutely no idea what's in front of their house on Monday morning. Um, education is a very difficult thing. We're living in a time of overload, information overload. Uh, if it's not signs on the roads, it's signs in the town, it's signs in the shop windows, it's emails coming. And people, are, because of the overload, are only looking at the things that they might want to be interested in. And they're only interested in things that might affect the hip pocket. Now you mentioned about um, fines and so forth. Uh, I, I think 
you've got to look along those lines. But those people that come down here, the householders, they've got a bit of an idea what should be happening, but they don't do it. But all their friends and family and, and B, uh, Air, Airbnb people, they've got no idea because they haven't been told. It's the information to get out to those people. You know, what I would do if I was running the show, and I'm not, but I'd put a, a, a someone in a, every truck, or well, just go back a bit, we tend to go down to the shop on Monday morning to get our paper, and we see ten or a dozen bins just scattered away over the street. We think that's terrible. The only people in Lawn, the only people in the Surf Coast, the only people in the world who see what's really happening right across Lawn are the truck drivers. Now, I'd be putting a person in that truck with a camera, riding shotgun, and getting out and taking a photograph of every bin that was scattered, and the house being made obvious, which house it is, send that to the uh, resident and tell them there's a big fine coming and I'll tell you what, they'll knock them in the ear pretty quick because it's the hip pocket that counts. And if they think they're going to get fined pretty heavily, they'll be telling their friends and relatives what the rules are. It's certainly right with that, but I totally agree that the majority of the time when it gets to that stage, it is the hip pocket, that's where people tend to change. The balancing act we have to play with is that currently um, every matter that we deal with when it's one of these domestic bin issues. I take from the point that this could end up in court. <coughs> so even though I want to go out and find them straight away, unfortunately we're not able to. Because if they went to challenge it in court, then all the work we've done to get them to change and correct their means, um, unfortunately the magistrate could rule against us with that. So in doing it, the process that we've got in place ensures that we're following a strict resume regarding it and shows that if the matter ended up going to court, we'd have the best outcome. Um, going back to sort of the trucks and having um, someone ride along with them, currently for the bins, I do two um, weekly inspections of all. I do one on either Monday or Tuesday and then another one um, Thursday or Friday. So the purpose of the Monday, Tuesday ones are to catch any of the residents that or any of the properties that have the incorrect bin put out um, to sort that issue out and also to pick up the litter that's um, originated from those. And the purpose of the Thursday, Friday ones are for the ones that put the bins out too early um, for the actual scheduled collection. So with regards to visibility from the trucks, um, we've just entered into a new contract where we will be receiving brand new trucks which will have live video footage available um, to council officers. So at the moment, if we want to see something from a camera on the current trucks, we have to request it and it can be a week later before we even receive it. So um, the new trucks will, will provide us live footage. Hey, we've got one more. Uh, Luke, uh, I've noticed a difference since you've come on board. Um, that's fantastic. Particularly along Smith Street. Uh, I've noticed a real difference in the amount of rubbish that's around in Smith Street on a Monday. My question is, uh, because the bins on, in Lawn go out on a Monday, 24 hours before it would be on a Sunday, a lot of the bins are going out on a Saturday. Now, I assume you're not here on a Saturday to be aware of those properties that do uh, break the law. Uh, now, you rely on people like me taking photographs and sending it into the Shire. How can we more effectively target the people who put the bins out on a Saturday? So currently we are exploring the option to actually put a few Saturday shifts in place because um, it is an area that we do see that at the moment, even though I'm there Thursday, Friday catching them, there are still a few that are putting them out on the Saturday. Uh, it is leading to a few issues there where the cockatoos are getting into them early. Um, so we definitely recognise that and we're definitely working our way through the means of how to do that at the moment and seeing whether that's an option. To say Luke's only just started in October, so he's targeting the low hanging fruit at the moment. Um, conscious of budget as always, not trying to charge the residents too much by doing too much overtime, but um, as we progress forward, um, you, you look at doing some weekends. Any other questions? Um, I, I also see that this is something that the community can do, and I'll use Gary Fenton's uh, example. Um, I think that the Shire's got a very good um, system with the CRM process 
And if Gary says he's on, on his way, I'm just, sorry, you know, I'm just using you as an example. Um, going down on a Monday morning to take a photo of each of those bins that's in front of the house, all of a sudden you'd be getting a massive amount of information from the community of where the serial offenders are. And, and I think all of us, it's something that we can do. And it's a very simple process, but I, I think it would certainly help the enforcement side of it. And, and I definitely 100% agree with you. It's something that we do encourage. Even though at this, at this stage I can't use the photos because when we issue a letter, um, we issue a photo to the actual property owner so that they can see that this is an issue your bin was here. Um, unfortunately, at this stage, we can't use photos supplied by the community, but those photos that they do, the community does supply us. They allow me to go to those areas quickly. It recognises there's an issue at those areas where I might not have known about it when I was going to be doing the patrol. So we don't really appreciate any of the information handed in by the community, because it just it allows me to do my job quickly and more efficiently with getting onto the issue. Fantastic. So, <coughs> would that be send snap solve we use? Um, you can either use send snap solve or the council website. Um, we do prefer to suggest people to use our council website or the council forms. Um, just gets to us a bit more quicker than the snap send solve wise. You can either send it to info at surfcoast.vic.au so mm -hmm. they'll come through to us. Um, or lodge it online to so our website and you can lodge a request there. Look, um, we live in a street with very few permanent. I have a problem with the fact that the bin is all messed up by the cockatoos the night before on Sunday evening. I can't really stand to wait for you to come and have photos. I have to clean them up. So a lot of things, have, you know, a lot of people aren't cleaning up. And so a lot of those things are not even noticed on Monday morning. And I'm, you know, only because we can't stand all the stuff lying around. I'm sure there's a whole lot. And the other thing is, I think we're preaching to the converted in here, of course. We all are trying to do the right thing. Um, and my other question, maybe to the Shire, is um, do we have these in different languages that do not feed cockatoos? Because I see a lot of Asian people, perhaps they don't understand, don't read. Do we put that out in any other form? Yeah, that's part of the work that Jacqueline's doing as part of her education around, as Ian mentioned, the biggest issue is the birds are having thing on being fed. Um, so a big part of what we're doing is trying to educate people not to feed cockatoos, and that includes the tourists. So having more signs around town, <laughs> I mean, I'm like that, but um, yeah, just trying to stop those tourists in particular um, from feeding the cockatoos, because it's all over social media, cockatoos sitting on people's heads and shoulders and getting fed. Um, or at the short term rentals, um, and that's leading to the issue we're seeing now. So it is a big part of what we're doing. And I did notice for the, for the uh, people who are online, a number of people were nodding when you were talking, Vicky, about cleaning up the rubbish. Um, so just to, that's not an isolated I really observation. I really do appreciate the work that the community, particularly the permanent residents, do to pick up the litter. Well, I so. don't like my street looking like that kind of rubbish in here. No, no, and our contractor is supposed to get out of the truck and uh, pick it up as well when, when they're here, but they're only here one day a week. So uh, if it happens on a Thursday, they're not here. Any other questions? Ian, I do have one that Suzanne passed on to me, um, which is the difference between the white, the sulphur crested cockatoos and the black cockatoos. <laughs> one's white, one's black. <laughs> <laughs> Um, very different behaviour, different diet. Um, the yellowtail black cockatoos that are common through or occur through much of Victoria um, have got a very long tail. They look almost prehistoric when they're flying. Um, they do occur in flocks, they roost communally, but they feed almost entirely in trees. I have seen them feeding on the ground once, but they largely feed on trees and they love pine, pine tree seeds. But um, they also feed on hankias and hard uh, seed covers like seed cases like that and banksias. Um, I've only heard of them causing a problem once, and that was in an apple orchard where they were biting the apples in half to eat the seeds. Um, but that's that's rare. They, they're 
seldom a problem. Um, whereas the South Acoustic Cocker 2, uh, as we all know, it's got a diet that includes a lot of things we like to produce for ourselves, um, including cereal crops, oil seed crops, as well as almonds and walnuts and all sorts of other nuts. Um, and they've been seen in vineyards snipping off bunches of grapes and watching them fall, not eating them. And uh, the, the wine growers have said to me, if they ate them, I wouldn't mind as much, but they're just pruning them off. Um, so look, they're very different birds. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions before we wrap up in here? Um, I think we're being a little bit hard on uh, short-term renters. Um, first of all, most of them leave the property around about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. If they're doing the right thing, uh, they'll put out the bins. Now, no one's told them or educated them about the possibility of cocktails ripping those lids apart. And secondly, if uh, you're a homeowner and uh, you want to leave on Saturday, you put the bin out or you ask a permanent neighbour if you can find one in lawn somewhere in your street to maybe on Sunday night take your bin out. It's, it's a difficult one because, you know, if it's hard in lawn, there's not many permanent residents, so both ways, it's not that practical to put your bins out at dusk every Sunday. Yeah, and part of that, where the root issue is, is providing um, residents with or property owners or whoever it is with options of how to manage that. So um, there are various things that you can look at. So transfer stations open on a Sunday afternoon and Saturday morning. So small amounts can be dropped off free of charge. Um, and that's a bit of a hassle getting up there, but there's also the drop-off, which is open 24-7, so um, that's just at the, the gate to the transfer station. So there are options, so if there's no one in the neighbourhood that's around to put your bins out, there, there are things that you can do. So, Neil, can I just ask a question related to what Kevin said? The responsibility falls on the owner of the property, does it, rather than any short-term tenant? So that owner needs to work out a way to ensure that the bin is put out the correct time. Yeah, that's that correct. correct. So the responsibility is on the owner. So, and again, part of the work that Jacqueline's doing is she's developed a information kit for uh, the renters, the short term um, holiday rentals. So you can't force them to read it or take any notice of it, but that information should be available for all the renters. Um, isn't the drop off point at the tip that has a sign that says for non permanent residents only? Yeah, that was what the original intention was for. So um, now it's pretty much excess waste. I mean, it's only small amounts, so one or two small bags. Um, not taking your full bin up there and emptying the whole bin in. Um, that's a bit more than a bit small amount. So yeah, it's intended for someone who's just well, been out for a weekend to take a people, couple of small most, bags. Most people wouldn't know that. They think it's live. I was never taking my rubbish up there because I thought it was for non permanents. Yeah, well, there's, that's probably a historical sign that's been there for quite a few years. So, um, we're trained, but once we introduce the four bin service, sort of recognising that a lot of people get through summer, have a, bit, a lot more rubbish. Um, we're changing it from more, uh, non permanent focus to an excess waste facility. So, yeah, it's only small amounts. If you've got large amounts, it needs to go to the transfer station because it's not designed for large amounts. But if you just got one or two small bags, um, you can take it and drop off. So it sounds like a sign needs to be changed at the appropriate time, and no doubt that's part of the work that Jacqueline will be doing with the four bin system. Is that correct? It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Very long list. Okay, I feel like we've got to the end of the questions. Any others? The, um, and thank you to Ron, Alan and Colin uh, for the demonstrations today and I believe that they and council staff will be hanging around their bins um, after we finish up to talk through and them with you and answer any other questions.